muchachos y muchachas. I hope you are doing well. I know my posts are a little bit slow this week, but that's because your homegirl here has a deadline. Next Friday, I will be premiering part one of three. That's a three-part series I will be doing on Chris Cornell and Chester Bennington. It will be available at natliedenise.com. So prepare for that. May 13th, that is next Friday. So as you could see and probably imagine, I'm really busy with the editing, finalizing a few touches. So it's a lot of work. I'll be very, very busy this weekend with that. Anyway, with that being said, that's just a little explanation to me uh, being a little bit absent this week, but know that it's for a good cause. But anyway... I found the story and I found it very interesting on Media Matters. This guy, his name is uh, Angelo Curson, and he is really going to bat for Hunter Biden and all of the media outlets that are reporting this. Now you guys know that even the mainstream media is confirming, hey, oops, the laptop's real. It's not really a Russian hoax anymore. Sorry. No, they didn't say sorry. But, you know, you you catch what I'm trying to say, right? They're, they have to uh, finally admit it, which makes me believe that my, there might be more information. But, you know, we'll have to wait on that. But anyway, this guy is going hard at bat for this. And he's saying, hey, back then, it was OK for Twitter to block the story because it wasn't based on factual evidence, you know, all these things. But anyway, I found a really interesting historical article now that it's about 10 a decade old it's 10 years old uh kind of giving some dark explanation behind media matters that's the outlet he's coming from you guys have heard of this outlet before and if you haven't i'll remind you of a certain name stay right there we're gonna go through it friends we are facing more threats than ever before when our leaders are warning of global food shortages, including here in the United States, it's time to act. Go to preparewithnatalie.com and get your long-term emergency food storage from My Patriot Supply while you can. We don't know when more empty store shelves may hit, so now is the best time to act. My Patriot Supply is by far the number one preparedness company to rely on. With millions of satisfied customers this past year, Act quickly and save $150 on a vital three-month emergency food kit. This kit provides breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks, totaling over 2,000 calories per day. Every family in America should have at least one three-month supply of food per person. Now you can. Go to preparewithnatalie.com and save $150 for your three-month food kits. That's preparewithnatalie.com. All right, so Media Matters. You guys might recognize this name. Uh, this is a big proponent, uh, left-leaning bias, watchdog organization, media company that rails against, you know, conservative uh, media personalities. They've even railed against personalities online for the 17 and on, you know, uh, a group. And so they've really gone ham on these types of people. But it's even more suspect now that, <clears throat> the mainstream media is now admitting that, hey, um, Hunty's, Hunty's laptop is a real thing. New York Times came out, Washington Post. They all admitted it. Oops. And it makes me wonder, what is to come if they're now having to admit? Well, <clears throat> you guys know that uh, Hunter Biden is actually under a tax probe investigation, uh, it, 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 looking into uh, some misappropriated funds or misappropriated payments, things of this nature. Uh, so they are they are utilizing contents of the laptop, which, you know, uh, there could be some explosive times to come. But anyway, this guy named Angelo Corson, he's really going at it. He's going to bat for this. And he's saying, you know what, Twitter at the time, they were right for banning this story. Most notable, it was actually the New York Post that was banned, and it really spurred this outcry with a lot of people. Even I, I think this was like a congressional hearing uh, where they brought in Jack Dorsey, and they actually made him testify about this. They locked out New York Post from their Twitter account because they had this story circulating. Jack Dorsey nowadays, and look, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if maybe Jack Dorsey is a sleeper or what, but now he's like applauding 
a lot of Elon Musk's moves. Uh, Elon Musk, like I said in my intro, is now um, he is notable uh, for being a free speech advocate. You know, I, I haven't quite made my opinion, but uh, we'll we'll see. But I mean, I think I think it's a good move. I think you know there's some positive changes on Twitter, but nonetheless, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how this all plays out. But anyway, that's just a side comment. But with this, Jack Dorsey is now applauding uh, Elon Musk his moves. He's even saying oh, it was a mistake. Oops, to ban uh, New York Post and their running article. But anyway, back to Angela Corstone, who's spouting the same talking points from 2019, 2020, where they're saying, oh, he was right. They were right for banning that article. It was based on conspiracy theories and wrong information. They didn't cite their sources, all these things. So he was actually on C-SPAN recently and uh, the the Washington Journal, uh, one of their, you know, their little platforms. And he was discussing uh, the country's media and basically spewing out the same talking points. And he is signing a, uh, a 20, I think it's 26 people at this point, a 26 person like petition letter uh, to advertisers. Hey, you guys don't want your stuff on Twitter. What are you aligning yourselves with this free speech platform now that Elon Musk is taking over? What? What what do you, what are you gonna do? You're gonna align yourselves with that? So they're they're trying to urge these advertisers from pulling out uh, from Twitter ad space and all that. And so uh, there was a a caller that called into the show, basically saying, "Hey, look, you could have in, you could have investigated the Hunty Pants, the Hunty story. Uh, why didn't you?" And he, he goes into like this very strange explanation to that. But anyway, let's get into this. So. This is what he had to say in regards to uh, Twitter initially banning the New York Post and other media outlets from sharing the article initially. On the Hunter Biden story itself, this is where our conversation becomes full circle, actually, um, because a lot of even people that are deep advocates for for the, for the, the narrative around Hunter Biden um, really seem to, to miss the genesis. They, they, you know, and for people that are not super enmeshed in the right wing media, when people talk about that, what they're referring to is the fact that in October of 2020, a New York Post article was published that Twitter decided you could not distribute the links to on Twitter. It's consistent with their policies of leaked information that was not verified. The right wing went nuts about it as evidence of a conspiracy. Um, Now, let's just go back in time here. The genesis and the reason why is that the New York Post article did not meet any minimum editorial standards. They did not provide any evidence. They did not verify anything that they were reporting. Sweetheart. And And this is this is a Senate hearing. I think a lot of people. So anyway, that was a Senate hearing that Jack Dorsey had to attend and he had to attest, you know, uh, hey, hunty, why uh, or I'm sorry, hey, Jack, Jack, why why did you censor this story? And he had to basically say, you know, oh, because reasons. But anyway, uh, yeah, Angela Corso going hard to bat saying, oh, you know, it had no evidence. Hun- honey, sweetheart, the laptop is the evidence. And then they went into all the lies about this as being Russian bots and things like this. So anyways, going to bat. But not only that, he's going to bat for his art. You guys heard about Hunter Biden art going for like $500,000 for finger paints. And uh, it's not a scheme at all, right? Like it's just totally legit. Anyway, moving forward, a a caller called him out. No pun intended. He go, she called into the show and she was like, basically like, hey, you could have investigated the story. Why didn't you? I'm going to get into some contextual speculation, right? And I'm going to provide some of that, some of that from an article. Take a listen. If you re- you're talking about reporters reporting, well, you could have investigated that. And the fact that uh, that the president's son is selling paintings for $500,000 he has no expertise. It's selling for more than a Monet. There's no investigation about, well, who's paying for that? And what are they paying for? Are they paying for that painting? Or are they paying for influence with the president of the United States? Got your point, Betty. Okay, so let, let's start with this. I'll take the second one. There are two different things that are happening at the same time. Yeah, I'm okay with investigating that. That's what journalism does. 
Yeah, yeah. Boy, I hope they're not, I hope it's not wrongdoing. You're supposed to be a journalist. Uh, but yeah, that's what journalism should do. You should ask those questions. Those are reasonable things to ask. Uh, I, I don't, there's no reasonable suspicion behind it or any evidence to back that up. But that's what journalists do. And I think that would be a, a story worth investigating. Right. Yeah. So a totally back pellet, pellet, pellet totally backpedaling and not answering the question about Hunter Biden's art, right? But, I mean, it's crazy that his silence is really loud, okay? So, Take a listen to this. The Clinton enforcer who raised tens of millions of dollars. Oh, let me do this. Carousone's, uh, Carousone's Angela Carousone's organization was founded in 2004 by David Brock. I got more tea on that. A former conservative journalist who turned a liberal activist who in 2017 was described by Politico as the Democrats attack a tax dog, the Clinton enforcer who raised 10 million, tens of millions of dollars and created a far reaching web of outside groups to push their presidential candidacy, candidacy, excuse me, is now training his sights on Trump. They wrote at the time, Brock is rallying, dem, uh, rallying Democratic mega donors behind his cause. And while he can be controversial at times, few bet against his efforts. His tentacles are far reaching, including his media monitoring nonprofit, Media Matters, and the opposition research super PAC, American Bridge. All right, that's a little letter that he wrote. Oh, this is a letter. Media Matters for America says it's dedicated on comprehensively monitoring, analyzing, and correcting conservative misinformation in the media. Uh, and of course, like I mentioned, you know, there were uh, big signatories on this big petition to the advertisers. Please pull your ads. Don't get on Twitter. Don't fund Twitter. What's wrong with you? Media Mega is funded by co- a coalition of donors, including the National Education Association, America's largest union, representing teachers and other school staff in several Jewish groups, such as the Combined Jewish Philanthropies of Greater Boston and Community Foundation of the United Jew- Jewish Federation of San Diego, right? Another 26 accountable tech is a Washington, D.C. based group led by Nicole Gill, a political campaigner and founder of the 2017 Tax March, and Jesse Leerich, uh, a former foreign policy spokesman for Hillary Clinton's campaign and the nephew of David Axelrod, a former senior advisor to Barack Obama. Now, you guys, you guys went to go see my NSA video, right? Scroll down a little bit. You'll find it. The secretive little group. Uh, called NSA, not the NSA that we're talking about, you know, like the the people who know all the communication and everything going on in our world. Um, it, it was a different one. Stood for something else, right? But anyway, it was a shadow group, a uh, shadow government. Uh, everybody, pretty much a lot of people, a majority of them moved swiftly into the Biden administration. Go watch that video. It's really, really good. So anyway, with that being said, I wanted to... <laughs> Uh, I wanted to bring you guys this piece of tea right here. So this is about Media Matters, right? Media Matters. We just learned a little bit about David Brock, right? Founded this Media Matters in 2004. You guys remember a name by James Elephantis, maybe, right? This is his ex-boyfriend. Yep. James Elephantis. James, well, not him, but uh, I believe his new partner or, uh, you know, there's okay there's there's a whole quarrel here and i'll explain but anyway david brock's ex-boyfriend was trying it was blackmailing david brock for close to a million dollars let me get into that david brock the founder of the liberal media watchdog organization media matters was blackmailed for eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. what for what you might ask blackmail what must be dark he paid it. He paid it. His gay ex-lover who threatened to reveal information about the nonprofit uh, nonprofit's group's finances to donors and the IRS, according to a dueling lawsuit. In order to pay the handsome sum, Brock sold a historic $1.5 million to pay this bribe or blackmail, whatever. A uh, home he owned in uh, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Yeah, in Delaware, the author claims... 
The lover's quarrel was dug up by Fox News, which was has been at war with Brock and Media Matters for years over his criticism of the network's conservative voice. Media Matters is a liberal organization that rails against the influence of conservative media. We already went through that. In a lawsuit, Brock says his former lover of 10 years, William Gray, contacted him three times after their breakup and demanded payment or he would embarrass him to his donors and report him to the IRS. Oh, what deep things would he have revealed should he have not paid that that blackmail bribe. In 20, uh, 2010, May of 2010, Brock says his lover sent him an email to him and his new partner, James Alephantis. And it read, um, I'm sorry, uh, James Alephantis is dating Brock, I guess, uh, David Brock. I don't know if they're still together, but at this time they were together. So they were both going to be blackmailed. They're both going to be blackmailed. Do you understand? James Elephantis and his uh, his lover, James uh, Bro David Brock, they were both going to get blackmailed. And it said, David, you and James pulled this same kind of sick nonsense in 2008 to try to hide your financial malfeasance. Next step is I call all of your donors and the IRS. OK, you understand? This is going to stink for you. If you do not resolve this now, I assure you. OK, so just to clarify, sorry if I was a little bit confusing at first, but David Brock dating James Alephantis now. David Brock's ex-lover is blackmailing David Brock and James Alephantis for this close to one million dollars to the point where David Brock actually paid it. He had to sell his mansion or uh, I don't know, I think it's a mansion, one point five million dollar home. Uh, so he sold his expensive home to pay for this bribe at the cost of a blackmail because he this his ex lover would have said, I, I don't know what he was going to reveal, but he was about to reveal some really dark things. I mean, think about it. You're moved and provoked to sell your one point five million dollar home to pay this blackmail bribe. How dark is this information? This is going to stink for you if you do not resolve this now, I assure you. Brock has been under fire from Fox News, um, of course, because they're being attacked, uh, being attacked by them under their nonprofit tax status, which prohibits it from directly engaging in partisan politics. It's unclear exactly what information Gray, David Brock's ex-lover, was threatening to unveil. However, he seemed to understand that Brock traveled in powerful political circles. Please finish this today so I don't have to waste my time emailing anyone. This is who he was going to email. Biden, Coulter, Car Tucker Carlson, Huffington Drudge, Ingram, and he allegedly said in 2008 an email. He was referencing Joe Biden uh, and Coulter, conservative commentator Tucker Carlson, Huffington Post founder Ariana Huffington, Drudge Report found, uh, founder Matt Drudge, and a conservative talk radio host Laura Angra uh, Ingram, excuse me. When Gray contacted Brock in uh, September of 2010, he claims he went to the police in Washington, D.C. and reported that he was being blackmailed. The allegations became public last January when Gray sued Brock and claimed that he kept 170000 of his property after the breakup. The items included furniture, several works of art, and an $8,000 Louis Vuitton suit bag. Two months ago, the pair settled the lawsuits. However, the terms of the settlement were not disclosed. How juicy is that? How juicy is it? This was written in uh, February of 2012. I just, you know, I, I got curious about Media Matters. I actually got curious about Angelo. But this is uh, this was like the most immediate thing that I found. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is a piece of tea. But imagine that there was something so dark that this guy was blackmailed into paying this blackmail bribe. He had to sell all his belongings, including his house, or not all. I'm sure it's not all. Okay. A retraction. I'm responsible. Okay. Retraction. He was close to selling 
pretty heavy, heavy things in order to pay this. What was in that information that was going to be revealed that is so dark that he had to make those drastic moves? Anyway, that's the video, guys. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for supporting me, loving me. Thank you for sticking with me. Uh, please be sure to check out nataliedenise.com. You guys can also sign up um, for a notification. So as uh, it gets closer to the day, I will release the time that this document or the first part of three parts of the documentary is coming out. And uh, it'll keep you up to date on the latter two pieces that will be coming out uh, in, we'll just say, a, we'll just say a couple months. We'll see. Uh, or it might be this month. We'll see. Uh, anyway, I love you so much. NatalieDenise.com. I will catch you guys in the next video. Oh, by the way, the Chester Bennington pieces will be free to view. So you can just sign up for free notifications. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. You can find more videos on my newly redone website, NatalieDenise.com, where I've got a series going on naming names as well as the truth speak easy where i can speak easy about current day topics and controversies grab your membership today become a member or just simply a patron i so appreciate all of your love and your support